Hi friends, my name is Al or Lil Starnerd and welcome to today's episode of A Little to the Left. This is a bit of a draw with me, so grab your sketchbook and settle in for a little drawing date. I'm also going to finally be answering a question that I have been avoiding my entire time here on the internet, so stay tuned for that. I wanted to do like a really basic art focused video this week because uh, I feel like I haven't really done that <laughs> that much lately, but I wasn't sure what I wanted to draw. So I asked you what you guys wanted to see me do over on the community tab and I got some varied responses. A few people wanted to see some acrylic stuff, um, which is not necessarily sketchbook session material, but I will keep that in mind for the future for sure. Um, and I also got a lot of like really cool suggestions, frogs, ballpoint sketches, inking, lots of good stuff that I will definitely like refer back to for future videos. But there were quite a few requests for markers and portraits and realism, which is perfect because after I posted the question on my community tab, I did a marker portrait that I ended up really loving and I wanted to do another one for a video. So that's what we're gonna do. So yeah, I did this marker portrait the other day because I realized like, I, I feel like marker portraits are my thing. <laughs> like I feel like people associate me with that and I associate me with that, but I don't, I also just don't do them that often. Like I do little, like little ones, but not big ones like, like this one. So I sat down to do it and I was working on the undertones and I accidentally made the entire portrait like very weird and vibrant and colorful. And I just absolutely adored the outcome. I think it looks really cool. Um, so I leaned into that and just had so much fun picking out the colors and making it look weird. While I was doing it, I was thinking like, I like I want to film this. Like this is the kind of stuff that I think people enjoy seeing from me, and I think it's a fun process to watch that I enjoy seeing in videos. Yet I never make videos like this. <laughs> I think I always think it'll be too much work to film. But when I was drawing that first portrait, it was actually like a really fast and easy process to do. So I don't know. I don't know. I think it's weird that I never like film these things that I enjoy and that I think you guys would enjoy. You know what I mean? Why don't I film the stuff that I want to film? Why do I make this so hard for myself? So I wanted to do another portrait like this for a video and you guys kind of asked for it. You guys mostly wanted realism um, or frogs. People really wanted frogs, but I got requests for markers and portraits. So like, it's kind of what you wanted. It's not necessarily realism, but it's not not, you know? <laughs> Oh, also the reference I used is linked below. My Pinterest is down there too with like my reference board. So like pretty much any reference I use, you'll be able to find. Um, I'm pretty sure this photo is a product photo for what I think is a cosmetic company called Lime Crime. So FYI. But anyways, let's talk about the portrait, shall we? Overall, I, th I think I had about 70, I'm bad at math. I think I had 70 to 75 minutes of footage um, of the art process in total. Then I cut out all like the idling bits where I was like thinking of, t or like taking a drink of water um, or like switching between markers. And that got rid of about 30 minutes of footage. So overall, really not much drawing time. Um, I have definitely become more efficient at portraits, even though this is a pretty big one, um, which is cool to see. I also have been working on relying less on colored pencils and being more confident with the markers when I do these. So I pretty much just use my Ahu markers. And then I used two lighter colored pencils, like a white and like a cream to add in like any highlights I lost at the end of the process. And then a white gel pen for like in the eyes and stuff. But as I think you can see, I primarily use the chisel tip when I'm doing portraits like these, especially for darker skin tones where I'm not having to like blend into white. Like with light skin, I usually will use a brush tip and then try to like really softly blend into paper or another light area. So it's just really easy to like see every brush stroke. But with darker skin, it's much easier to blend and get rid of those brush strokes like later. So I just, I really went in there, you know, with the chisel tip, didn't worry too much about making like really bold marks and stuff like that. Um, and then I just went in and had a lot of fun building up value and preserving those really beautiful highlight shapes and making those really big like bold strokes. Had a lot of fun. This portrait is obviously a bit stylized. It's not exactly realism um, considering the coloring. Um, I'd say this is pretty exemplary of my own style as an artist. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today uh, is how to find and develop your own art style. 
This is a question I get asked on a very regular basis and it's one I never really felt comfortable answering because I felt I still hadn't found my own style. But I think with my years of experience under my belt at this point, I found some good tips and tricks and words of advice that I think are worth sharing. First of all, I want to say that my personal philosophy with art is that with practice and patience, most things will come naturally. That doesn't mean that you sit back and like wait for it to happen. You can absolutely put work in, but with time and steady development of your skill, your style will organically develop and that might be a better route than trying to force it to happen over a matter of weeks or days. I also want to say that you don't need to have just one style. I think a lot of artists, especially young artists, get really caught up on feeling as if they have to have some sort of identifiable brand, one straight style that makes them them. But I think kind of pigeonholing yourself like that can be really limiting and you should feel free to explore and experiment with your style because having multiple like styles or no style at all can give you the freedom to do like a lot of different art rather than sticking to one specific thing over and over. That being said, having a distinctive and consistent style is something most artists want, including me, especially if they're looking to do something like illustrative work or comics or something like that. So even though I recommend you don't try and force it, there are certainly some ways that you can try to move the development along a little faster. Whether you do more traditional realism or more stylized stuff, a great way to develop a style is to look at the artists you admire and learn from them. Do studies of their work, recreate pieces, replicate the way they draw eyes over and over again to break it down and better understand the process. Obviously, be respectful to artists, especially like current alive artists. Make sure that you know the difference between referencing and stealing. This kind of stuff is usually the stuff you don't post, so just keep that in mind that when you're referencing and copying other artists, you're being respectful about what you do with it. But it's generally accepted and expected that you'll study and copy other artists in your free time when trying to learn. And when you're recreating those elements of someone else's art, you'll kind of naturally translate it a little bit into your own style simply because, you know, it's your own hand doing it. It's not going to be the exact same as the original because it's you doing it and that's already a difference. Let that natural change occur. You don't want to directly rip off another artist, so let those natural tweaks happen to make those things like fit better into your own style. So, like I said, recreating others' work is a great way to kind of learn different approaches to subjects and see from someone else's perspective. And it can be super broad or super specific. You can recreate whole works, like I do master copies a lot, where I straight up copy an old master's work, and it helps me better understand different color palettes, classic styles, anatomy, composition, storytelling. Or if you want to learn how to draw stylized eyes and you just can't figure out how to simplify eyes to fit your style, you can look at how other artists do them and copy them over and over again until you figure out how it works for them and then take bits of that and put it into your own art. So those are like some specific ways of developing your style, but sometimes even just figuring out like what kind of style you want to go for is like too much to figure out. Like, do you want to go super chibi and cute and simplified? Do you want it to look more graphic, line art or no line art? Do you want it to be borderline realism? Stuff like that. Just figuring out like what kind of artist you want to be in that sense is already daunting, especially when you see so many amazing artists online and you want to be just like all of them, but they all have completely different styles. It gets a little overwhelming. So when it comes to those first steps, I have a few bits of advice. First, think about what you enjoy looking at in life, in art, whatever, what you feel kind of drawn to represent in your art. For me, I like faces, so that's what I draw. I like faces in historic art, I like them in anime, I like them in comics, I like to look at them in real life. So that's what calls to me as an artist, and so I cater my practice to faces and portraiture. I really like colors, I see a lot of color in life, and so I play around with colors in my art. Let your own artistic eye guide you. Let your artistic gut tell you what to do. It can be hard, but think about like, like the girls who drew eyes over and over in middle school and nothing else. Like what's your eye? What's the thing that you just like to doodle over and over again, or you want to be able to doodle over and over again, or you could look at for hours on Pinterest and follow that path. You can also think about like what part of the artistic process do you enjoy most? Do you like sketching, lining, coloring, painting? Put the emphasis of your process on that. Focus on developing that skill and see where that takes your style. Maybe you like lining a sketch best and before you know it, your style has developed into a super graphic, line heavy, intricate, detailed kind of thing, you know? Again, my philosophy here is that you shouldn't have to force it. 
Listen to yourself and your artist's intuition and work on what you enjoy and I promise it will take you places. I also suggest thinking about what you want to achieve with your art or what story you want to tell. What is the best way to reach that to make that happen? If you want to illustrate kids' books, you might want to focus on shape language and simplification and color theory rather than classic portraiture. If you want to design logos, you should work on digital art and typography. If you want to make a graphic novel one day or paint professional portraits or design clothes, whatever. Having that frame of reference will be a huge step in helping you not only figure out your style, but figure out a style that actually works for you rather than limits you. Some general advice that I'm just going to kind of throw in here is do a lot of experimentation if you see an artist that you like do something new um, and you're intrigued by it, copy it. Maybe don't post it, but copy it and see how you feel about it and see what you can incorporate into your own practice daily. Think about colors and color palettes. Do you want specific colors to be kind of um, associated with you? Make limited color palettes to work with. Things that can kind of be repeated in your art to kind of make the illusion of a style even if you haven't figured out your style yet. What I always need to remember is like, don't work against yourself. I always tend towards realism and I, whenever I think about wanting to do a more like stylized style, I always try to go very, very like cartoony and very stylized, which is just not what I do naturally. And so I'm always like fighting against myself when doing stylized stuff and it never ever turns out well. So if, it, if it's not for you, if it's not happening naturally, don't try to force it. Like if what you generally draw is like super simplified lines, don't try to all of a sudden make your style like super hyper realistic and hyper detailed. You can try, but if it if it's not working, if it just doesn't make sense for your brain, maybe maybe try a different route. And overall, like I said in the beginning, practice and patience is key. Slow progress is in my opinion the best progress. So even if you're not suddenly overnight developing a crazy good style that you love, just by practicing every day and slowly developing your skill, your style will eventually develop on its own. Even if you can't see it, other people will, and it'll be like much more organic and easy for you to maintain than if you just like follow a bunch of video tutorials <laughs> and like try to make that happen for you. Not that you can't also do that. Um, that doesn't, it's not wrong, but it might be easier to just let it happen on, on its own, which is frustrating. Trust me, I feel you, it's frustrating. <laughs> But yeah, that's pretty much all my advice. Um, I personally still don't think I've kind of figured out my own style. I, I personally don't even think I have a style. And I, I, the only reason I kind of say that I do is because people constantly tell me that it, my art is very identifiable and that I do have a style. So I don't know, I might not be the best person to get advice from on this topic, but I thought my thoughts were worth sharing. So there you go. But that's the video, that's the process, those are my thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed and got some art done or just relaxed. Thank you guys for watching, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff, you know what to do. Go drink some water, lay in the sun, and go do some art. Eh, okay.